Yeah, obviously yeah. I have one. You have to do in, in places that they get into the kitchen, hmm. the bathroom. You, you yeah, well, I've had one response, and that was uh, through an, e an email that I sent uh, oh, about. Anywhere where there's plumbing, any yeah. bathroom. Yeah. Right. Thank you for being willing to bring Tony. Yes, I appreciate that. Thank it's, you. It's great to be thanked for something you didn't actually do. <laughs> I dropped Vivian off uh, at, at the airport. No, like uh, five after eight. So I knew I'd have time, you know, to get to get home. Mm -hmm. The doctor, that's what. Yeah, she's, she's having surgery. Yeah. yeah. Knew there was something. I went. A lot of times. Is it? It's, it's airport. It's airport. <laughs> yeah. 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 Is it major? Anything major? Anything we read that? Decompression of the ulnar nerve in her elbow. <laughs> and then other, and somebody else is really having someone else in the case. Yeah, Jana Duval. Yes. She's having, or maybe she's already had it. I don't know. But right around now, oh, mm -hmm. injection in her. Oh, in her burning of the nerves, I think. Yeah, yeah that. Yeah. 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 Yep. I wonder if I can, I mean, I, I remember always seeing her standing. Now I know why. She was always standing. Yeah. yeah. Like this. You know about that. that she's out there. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I do it. <laughs> okay. Second Thessalonian. Are we? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Everybody last week breathed a sigh of relief because we were finished for a second. <laughs> sigh of relief. <laughs> Actually, that's an amazing book. Not that they all aren't, but it's just so much. Dave Merritt, is it just running late or do we have a quote? Oh, I have not heard from him. No. Any news about Carol? Pardon me? How about Carol? Oh, yeah. even check. Uh, I hadn't heard that she wasn't coming. I thought her last night. Yeah, she, yeah, she usually a little bit late. When she go to church this in the she morning, does. right? You yeah. Some church. Yeah. So. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Sorry, up all night, miserable this morning. Oh, oh. Okay. Nope. Tell us she can come here and be miserable with us. <laughs> right. yeah. I mean, there's enough misery to go around. Uh, sure. It's hard for her early in the morning. I know. It's, I mean, it's a lot of night. Yeah. Okay. Shall we, why don't we start? I'd ask Wayne to pray, but. Mm. <laughs> There. Speak of Dave Merritt. Hey. Okay, let's pray. Father, thank you for this morning. Uh, first of all, we want to thank you for being our God, adopting us into your family. Thank you for loving us incredibly. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for your word and your Holy Spirit, which helps us to understand your word. Uh, thank you, Lord, for this uh, Bible study. What a, a great bunch of uh, people. I thank you, Lord, for them. And, being in my life. We're, we're sort of sorry to hear about Carol and her struggle with her, her night. Uh, and we ask you Lord, to bless her real special as she's not able to be with us, uh, at least not physically, but I, I'm sure her heart is with us. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the special person that she is. Mm -hmm. Then God, uh, we ask you to open up your scriptures to us and open our hearts to your scriptures so we might hide your word in our heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 David, this is Diane. Diane, yes. David. My hands are cold. Or am I sorry? <laughs> <laughs> and what? And how do we make the connection here? You just shook her hand. That's how. Okay. <laughs> then we're no longer strange. The moment we shake hands, we're friends. Right. Right. Good. Nice to meet you. And you're in red for Valentine's Day. There you go. What is that? 
the 14th, the month. Oh, it's going up. Yeah. <laughs> she attends here. At okay. Yeah. You sort of look familiar because I've been coming here, to, well, not to the church, but to uh, senior Bible uh, study. And oh, this is my first time at senior Bible study. I okay. Love, I would love it. Okay, so we're in Second Peter, uh, Second Peter, Second Thessalonians, chapter one, verse one. So, would anybody? Let's see. We, I would say, read the first four verses, but I can do that. How about the first five verses? This opportunity. First five. Paul and Silvanus and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought always to give thanks to God for you, brethren, as is only fitting, because your faith is greatly enlarged, and the love of each one of you toward one another grows even great, ever greater. Therefore, we ourselves speak proudly of you among the churches of God for your perseverance and faith in the midst of all your persecutions and afflictions which you endure. This is a plain indication of God's righteous judgment so that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which indeed you are suffering. A lot in there, isn't there? Anybody want to jump in and anything just kind of pop out at you? Oh, they're afflicted. Pardon me? They're afflicted. They're persecuted. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. And their love for each other is growing greater. In spite of the persecution, they're joining into each other, encouraging one another, I assume. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you you remind me, or what you just said reminds me of okay. um, Richard Wormbrand. I've spoken, I've mentioned his name. If you don't know, Richard Wormbrand um, was a Lutheran pastor. He lived in Romania, and he was there during the communist takeover. And um, he ended up spending 14 years in communist prisons because of his faith. And uh, I, I think I've told you, but if I haven't, um, I saw him speak. He was at uh, the Bible school that I was for a week, and he gave meetings. He, he, his feet were so severely beaten 20, 25 years before that he couldn't stand and preach. He sat while he preached. Um, but my point of telling you, bringing you back to what you're saying, he said, he was saying how they found great um, camaraderie and love and caring between the many different uh, pastors in the many different denominations. And I think the implication that I take away is maybe if there was none of this persecution, they wouldn't have really known each other. They wouldn't have had any fellowship. They wouldn't have had any real reason to. But if we let the persecution that happens in our lives cause us to, you know, draw strength from one another sure we have god but we also god's given us each other that's a really very important uh, point that you're you're bringing up you know, what, you know we're called to be to persecution you know if we live a godly life we live trusting god and obeying the word of god we will see some sort of persecution um but let's not let that drive brothers and sisters in christ away from each other because we so desperately need each other. You know, I think of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes says two are better than one. You know, if one stumbles, the other will lift them up. If one is cold, the other can give some warmth. You know, it's a tragedy when any church runs into uh, you know, divisions and, and divisiveness mm -hmm. and things like that. That's, to me, that's what the devil wants to do, divide and try to conquer. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to know us by our love of one another. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that were said in here, right? Wasn't mm -hmm. it? You know, but they did. They do yeah. love one another, right? The love of every one of you abounds towards each other. It's about it's growing. It's doesn't stay stagnant. 
that's what oh to be the kind of people that can be boasted about other you know Paul boasted of them you know mm -hmm. among other mm -hmm. other churches you know mm -hmm. this is an you know this is an example of love that he wants to mm -hmm. wants us to have for one another without the persecution <laughs> as you <laughs> expressed um, what you were expressing the thoughts came to my mind that and the persecution cause and effect the persecution led to these guys <clears throat> unity and so will there be as much persecution if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing loving each other bonding together um doing what these gentlemen did in prison before they arrived at prison I'm not I'm sure there's a connection, but there, in some, yeah. unfortunately, in some cases, there probably is. Yeah. But I think, you know, irrespective of that, we saw early on when we were yeah. reading in First Thessalonians that Paul came to Thessalonica, he shared the gospel, people got saved, and then persecution happened. Yeah. And whether I don't know that you can always draw a connection between persecution causes love. You know, I, it, right. it I, think it, I think well, probably what it does is it enhances what's already there. If you've got a hatred, persecution is only going to feed hatred. So, I, yeah. you know, um, and again, there's just way too many scriptures that says that if we're going to live truly a godly life, eventually there's going to be some kind of persecution. You know, go, yes. going to the, the grocery store and saying, God bless you to somebody, someone laughs at you. That's, sorry, that's not persecution. <laughs> <laughs> or someone you know makes fun of your faith and you think that's not persecution you know um that might offend us <laughs> it might make us feel bad but that's not persecution um but you know i think there's some of that maybe and to me if it happens the way you said it, that's sort of unfortunate yeah but it's necessary what you know if it draws people together okay Kind of looking forward to um, when we get down to verse five, the, the, the dis, your discussion about that, because at least in this version, it almost sounds as though that um, the way it's worded, that we need we have to undergo persecutions and tribulations to be made worthy of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And I know that's not so, oh. but. That's the way it sounds like mm. in my version here, it says, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. Mm. So I don't know about that. Yeah. And not everybody suffers in that way. So I think you're right. It doesn't necessarily speak to the fact that if you're not suffering, then there's no place for you in heaven. Um, right, and we don't, then we're not, right. It's not something we have to go through to be made worthy of the kingdom either. So, but. Sometimes I, you know, I wonder that maybe we have a, do we always have the right understanding of what it means to suffer? And um, we don't live in a country as of yet that we have a lot of persecution from the outside, at least not very much. Some people may, you know, some people may get, you know, beaten up because they're, you know, sharing the gospel with somebody. Um, but but um, I think it's not, it's not persecution per se. But I think when there's not persecution, there's other struggles that we may have. Like I was looking at uh, 1 Peter 4, 1. It says uh, suffering when a person, look, I can't just try to order out the top of it. So I, 1 Peter 4, 1. It says this. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. 
And, and I'm not saying what I'm about to say is the understanding that we should have from that verse. But what, I, but what I'm sometimes wondering is when we don't have that outward persecution or suffering, that the struggles we have inside, you know, uh, the temptations that we have that we wouldn't necessarily normally have, you know, let me illustrate this. Uh, those in uh, communist prisons, Richard Wurmbrand per se, they're being persecuted. They didn't have time to, to lust. They didn't have time to think about gaining riches. Mm -hmm. They didn't have right. time to think about anything other than their Lord who is sustaining them and their captors who are persecuted. When you don't have that, then our hearts and our minds are open to other things and it's a battle. I think um, you know, Romans 7 speaks to that issue. Paul said, there's this battle going on inside of me. Those things that I would like to do, I don't do. Those things that I, I think that's, that's not the persecution, obviously, but that's part of a struggle that helps us to grow. And when there's not outside persecution, then I think that inner struggle is a very beautiful revealing of the fact that we do have a relationship with God. Because just think, most people don't struggle with, you know, I, I, I just cheated on my taxes. Uh, the government doesn't need my money. Uh, you know, if, if when we, a lot of people, they don't, they don't care. The more they do the wrong thing, the less they care. Mm -hmm. That's true. So it does give everybody a conscience. But that conscience is, is uh, loud maybe at first, but the voice gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where I think isn't there a verse that talks about consciences being seared? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if this if that kind of helps, but um, we get acclimated. We get acclimated, acclimated. to mm -hmm. uh, to our surroundings to to the sin. Yeah. That right. so easily be mm -hmm. it. That right. which so easily besets. Besets, yeah. Hmm. I think what helped too is that I read six and seven. <laughs> I know I'm jumping ahead. Sorry. No, yeah. but I read seven hours, kind started. of hour study. Well, when we read, read when we read them all, yeah. it'll come clear. Um, and I mean, why don't you go ahead? Just read it and then tell us what you. Well, six and seven <laughs> says because they are righteous and living their righteous lives, God is repaying with tribulation those who are troubling them, who are causing their persecution. Because they are the righteous ones and living for Him, then God is repaying the the um the ones who are causing them issue. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed, etc. Mm -hmm. But I, we do have to be um, forewarned that we may not see it in our lifetime because it says when. The Lord Jesus returns, basically. Yes, right, mm -hmm. right. And I also think that there are more than there's more than one way God um, does uh, repaying with tribulation those who trouble you. You know, I don't think we should be be praying for people to get their you just know what's coming to them. No, and I think of Saul. I just may white want to right, mm -hmm. but think of Saul. Who yeah. persecuted the church, and uh, that, that's the outcome that we should want with anybody that mistreats us. You know, I, I can't remember if I've shared here, I know I shared somewhere recently. And um, when I shared it, I didn't know who it was. And, and the person that uh, heard me say it said, I think that might have been Francis of Assisi, somebody famous to not so famous that I remember. But a famous um, was was robbed and beaten, 
And when asked about it later, he said, um, he responded you know, this way. First of all, I'm thankful to God that I didn't get more injured. And I'm thankful to God that I wasn't the perpetrator. Mm. Oh. That's pretty profound. Yeah, it is. Um, and I think that was very gracious on his part, too. Mm -hmm. He didn't say anything about the other person in a negative I, that I remember in hearing, hearing mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, you know you're spirit-filled when you, when you can handle people being unkind to you without mm -hmm. wanting them to get what they what they deserve. Pray mm -hmm. for those who persecute you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, love, love your enemies. Mm -hmm. It's all part of the part of the picture. Right. Mm -hmm. Going back to verses three and four. Sure. Paul is being very careful in in pointing out right away his these brothers and sisters of his are in, in the faith are growing more and more. He's giving them encouragement and love and. That is so uplifting. If I if I were a Thessalonian Christian being persecuted, I would want to hear that from Paul right away <laughs> and endure these persecutions and trials because they are certainly going through it in a desperate way sometimes. So that Paul is very well aware of that. And then he then going down further, we, we see why what, what's going on and but just just the first things he says to them is so loving and and, and lift them right up. That's what they need to hear. I have been um, listening to um, and thinking about the kingdom of God a lot lately. I <laughs> know, mm -hmm. yeah. good. And um, listening to a broadcast about it or a podcast, and and um, I. When I think about this uh, this verse and it says um, being counted worthy of the king, we've been talking about the kingdom of God as something future, but it is also present. We're, yeah. we're to be praying. We are part of the kingdom of God now. Mm -hmm. And to be part of a kingdom means you have a, we are subjects, they're subjects of that kingdom. We're all subjects of the king. Yeah, King Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not. Um, I think it's. It was, so when we talked about, oh well, you need to be worthy to get into the kingdom. Well, no, no but I want to be such that I <clears throat> am worthy. <laughs> uh, not that I'm. I mean, I'm not even close. But uh, <laughs> more worthy than you were before you. More worthy than I was, anyway. You know, so yeah. there, there's, there's a sense in which I mean, these people were counted worthy of the kingdom. Counted, of course, means doesn't mean they are. They, but they are. Anyway, it doesn't mean that those who aren't counted worthy aren't going to be in the kingdom when they. You know, as far as the as heaven goes, I. But we really want to be moving as together in the kingdom, and that means loving one another, be um, being one with one another. Uh, you know, um, and uh, some 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 of us will get in. But as a fire, you know, everything, our works will be all wood, hay, and stubble, wood, hay, and stubble you know. But others will actually come into the kingdom with, with rewards that, right. you know, there's a different, there, there are differences. We can't just say we're all the same and we're all just going, you know, there, there are differences uh, in, in our rewards. And... So it's not like they have to undergo persecutions and tribulations to be made worthy to get into the kingdom, but they are 
having persecutions and tribulations because it's obvious that they are members of the kingdom mm. and living for yeah. God. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. Very good. Very good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I, those I, were my thoughts, and you expressed it much better than what I was trying to come up with. Wow, straighten it out. I don't know why what I said helped you say that, but that was very good. It was, yeah. That was struggling a bit. <laughs> because on face value, it looks as though they're not yeah. members of the kingdom. Yeah. I could see where somebody would take that at face value and say, well, you know, you have to be, something has to happen to you to be made worthy to get into the kingdom. But, <laughs> but no, no. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> In his first letter to Thessalonians, he talks mm -hmm. about the same persecution. A lot, a lot of this early stuff is very similar to what he said in First Thessalonians. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I sort of got the impression, or I get the impression, that the Christians weren't the only ones that are, were being persecuted. I mean, the Romans would come in and they didn't care what religion you were. You know, if you didn't fall in line and do exactly what you... You know, you could find yourself on the wrong side of, you know, um, you know, yeah. Um, so if I'm not a Christian and I feel like I'm being persecuted by an unjust government, you know, I, I might, I might, after a day of, you know, being thrown in jail, why should I be in jail for, for this? I'll just go and do what they want me to do. No endurance. Or I might, you know, um, the point that I'm making is endurance is a key, and I think it's an evidence of yeah. um, the fact that Jesus lives inside. You have a reason for standing firm, and the reason isn't anything that's selfish right. in the negative sense. Um, and I don't, you know, what? I, I think we should selfishly guard our heart. <laughs> I should. Right. I think we should be selfish about our relationship with God, not an exclusion for anything else, anyone else, but an exclusion to what we could be, and 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 that's not good. What we could be is not good, you know. Um, I don't know if I'm making any sense here. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's so great that we have, especially in the Old Testament, we have all those examples of of uh, you know Daniel and Joseph and you know mm -hmm. Job and. You know, so many who went through such wicked trials mm. graciously, and um, and it all ended up okay. Mm. So nice to know that. Yeah, I, I we're, we're talking a lot about witness, and, and yeah, I just I know a lot. I know a lot of. Well, I'm, I'm I'm so happy. I I really it's great. I I guess maybe I just don't see the way what it is. I mean, I know an awful lot of people, and they're very people are very kind, kind. And are they Christian? Well, some are, some aren't. I I think it's important, at least to me that I don't put all these people down. I just, I, but I certainly look for opportunities to tell them about Jesus. Mm -hmm. they're, they're happy people. I know a lot mm -hmm. of happy people. Yeah, I don't, personally, I don't think it's about putting into people down. It's the, it's the kingdom. There's two mm -hmm. kingdoms. There's the kingdom of God, and there's the kingdom I of... You know, I, I'm, I sat here listening to you, and I really, because I, I, I wanted to understand what you're talking about. Mm. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I mm. like the discussion rather than freedom. I should... I, I really want to hear all You're right yeah. about not, not judging people. We have no idea what's going on on the inside of them in their hearts. You know, and in their private lives, we don't know. You know, all we see is what we see, and we try to. I try to help out. Sure, I try. Mm -hmm. Sure, I help. Sure, but I don't. Um, people aren't as happy as they look. <laughs> I, people aren't always as happy as they look either. Their their mm -hmm. lives are not mm -hmm. not as 
together as they present to uh, everyone. Well, I, maybe God has put me cheerful people <laughs> in my way to help me because I'm I'm a lot older than Rush and I, I and I'm happy with what how God is what. Are you struggling with being a member of the kingdom of God? Not or not? Not at all. No, I don't mean you personally, but are you struggling with people that you know are nice, <clears throat> but you're not sure whether they're Christians or not? Or? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, uh, I, and I wonder if I could you know, try to do something. Okay. Well, the guidance of the Holy Spirit is always helpful. Yeah. If I'm in a situation, as you describe, I, first thing I'll do is pray, Lord, what should I say here? You know, give me the words to say, mm -hmm. because I, I don't want to offend that individual, you know, right. push them away or them away. Yeah. Well, they don't do anything. I mean, they, they're, they are not unkind. They don't do anything nasty mm -hmm. at all. And I have relatives very nice court really with people that you know Christian. Mm -hmm. And that bothers me. Mm -hmm. I have a son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My other son became a Christian before he passed you. Oh wonderful. So, Glorious. I would like to go back to verse three. Um Paul is giving thanks to God for them. What is he thanking God for? For their love for one another. Um, and, and for their faith. And my thoughts went to, this is what God, he's thanking God for. Faith and love for one another. Mm -hmm. And all those other things that we think are so important are not what he's thanking God for, for them. He's not thanking God that they have right theology. That they have what? That they have right theology. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's a, a simple life. Mm -hmm of loving each other. And as the word said, it is that love that shows those outside that, that, that they're Christians. They'll know we are Christians for our love for one another. Um, and then that leads to persecution because they find out, oh, they're Christians. Well, let's throw them to the lions. That's Christians mm -hmm. At, at what way? What? I'm not sure. I mean, they, love. they don't. They're very critical. And mm -hmm. I, when people, mm -hmm. names, of course. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So they have flaws. Hmm? They have flaws. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we all do. Mm -hmm. Some of them are more obvious than others. Some of us are much better at keeping our flaws at home <laughs> and uh, they're not our public like face. I, um, I don't think there's enough focus in the church on, on um, loving one another and the ways in which yeah. we should care for one another mm -hmm. and uh, being again, part of the kingdom, mm -hmm. you know, not just uh, our, when it's not just me and God, it's, and us. it's not just Sunday morning it's, or Sunday morning and Wednesday evening. It's are are you living out your faith with each other? Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right. right. Mm -hmm. Loving one another doesn't mean oh we see each other we see each other with a smile every Sunday morning. You know. Yes. Yeah. Right. I think that there's a bit of quite a bit of theology in that word faith. I'm sure there is. <laughs> um, I, I I was thinking, you know, not long ago, the different there, there is different Jesuses out there, mm, yes. and um, 
there's the Jesus of the Jehovah Witnesses. Mm -hmm. Not to judge, not to put down, not yeah. to be unkind, but the, the Jesus of the Jehovah Witness is not the Jesus of the scriptures. They believe that Jesus is the Archangel Michael. Right. And we believe he's Emmanuel, God with us. Mm -hmm. Two different Jesus. Mm -hmm. So they put their faith in that Jesus. Their faith is misplaced. The Jesus of the Mormons He's the spirit brother of Lucifer, the devil. Different Jesus. You can put all your faith you want to in Jesus, the spirit brother of Lucifer, but you've got misplaced faith. You know, the Jesus of the Muslims, their Jesus certainly is a prophet, only a prophet. But he didn't die of crucifixion. Somebody took his place. They say somebody was crucified. It wasn't Jesus. Someone took his place. The wrong Jesus. The Jesus of the Bible actually died and rose again. No death and there's no resurrection. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I guess what I'm saying is there is definite theology in that idea of faith. Well, yes, but, but I think you all know that that's not what I was talking about. Okay. I, I was <laughs> talking about all the little bickering that we do with, between oh. denominations and pre, um, pre trib, yeah. post trib, yeah. and that kind of yes, um, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good for you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I you think it is. Yeah. 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 My footnote here for as far as says that <clears throat> the keys. Surviving persecution and trials are perseverance and faith. When faced with crushing troubles, we can have faith that God is using our trials for good and for his glory, knowing that God is fair and just and will give us patience in our mm -hmm. suffering because we know that he has not forgotten us. In God's perfect timing, he will relieve our suffering and punish those mm -hmm. who persecute us. Mm -hmm. There you go. And he hasn't left us nor forsake us. No, right. Hey. That's right. That's right. Right. That was a very important verse in my yeah. life once. I'll probably last. But. Love Psalm um, 121. At the very end of it. I'm not just find it. I recite it to myself often. The very end of it said. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Mm -hmm. So I just love that. Like you said, yeah. in his time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he who begun a good work in you shall complete it. Do you mind singing that? Singing it? <laughs> he who began a good work in you. <laughs> to be faithful to complete it. <laughs> You've begun a good work. To be faithful to complete it. You go. <laughs> that verse that you just read, the last verse that you just read for us, something popped out, whether or not that was, it's worth having popped out or not. But <laughs> the Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. From this time forth and forevermore. Yeah. Notice there's nothing mentioned about the past. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I noticed that too. Uh -huh. yeah. it, um, <laughs> Philippians and Philippians, <laughs> Paul says, I forget those things that are in the past right. and I press forward. Yeah. I think too often we, we live in past do. things. Uh, yeah. You know, let's learn from the past. I mean, mm. there's important Pretty things, to, but that's about as far as. Yeah. Amen. Um, Amen. Right. We live now, and we're heading towards the future. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it's so hard to forgive ourselves right. for yeah. things that have occurred in the mm -hmm. past, and mm -hmm. and, it, and if that happens, it, it stops you from going forward. Mm -hmm. You know, with the right attitude, drags you down. Um, but when yeah. we don't forgive ourselves, are we making ourselves bigger than God? For me, that's why we don't have. Unfortunately, she's right, though. We do. A lot of people do 
let guilt of the past affect their present. Right. And need to be set free. Yeah. 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 I like the story of Zacchaeus. Remember Zacchaeus, mm -hmm. the tax collector? Mm -hmm. He was short like mm -hmm. Wayne and me. Have to <laughs> Sorry, but you're going to have to sing it when you're done. I had no idea. <laughs> that what this was a wee little man. Go on. Okay. <laughs> he was guilty of taking money from people. When he got convicted, he didn't spend, he was guilty. He spent seemingly no time feeling guilty because what did he do? He went and gave back the money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, if we're guilty, we're guilty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we don't have, if we truly repent, which part of it means restoration when, whenever possible, but then trust God is forgiven us and go forward. Go forward. forward. Yeah. Let's have a pizza sin to the past. There's, there's no, there's nothing good in repeating the, Mm -hmm. Sins of the past. There are so many people that I would I would like to uh, bring back before me and, and apologize for mm -hmm. some way I mm -hmm. I didn't what I didn't do or what I should have done or and uh, there's no way of doing that. Some of them are dead, you know. It's like <laughs> whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and uh and so these things they they sometimes crop up in my mind these these uh, past things, you know and. Um, I really have to. I really, I really have to give it back to the Lord. Mm, yeah, I know right. I don't. Yeah, I yeah. Don't, it's it is. It can be difficult at times not to let those things come in. And I think right. the, the devil mm -hmm. likes to. Yes, he's yes. the accuser of the brethren, and he yeah. likes to accuse you for things that are forgiven. You know, yeah. they're gone, yeah. done. Oh, you yeah. know, mm. and then that might hold you back from. Yeah, witnessing or taking part in a ministry because you think oh, I'm not worthy. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not worthy. I've done this and this and this, and so mm -hmm. yeah, he can really use that mm -hmm. against you. And there are those opportunities too where it should hold you back. For example, if your uh, sin was too much alcohol, then you should be held back from right <laughs> through <laughs> from ministry into the bars unless you feel unless you really have it. Very strong word for the Lord. Mm -hmm. and, and total victory. Total victory, and total right. Victory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's that's learning. That's not that's not uh, being held back uh, from doing what God wants you to do. Mm -hmm. Learning from our mistakes is our sins. What the unsaved people. It, you know, they don't want to hear about God, they don't want to hear about the church. And, what do you do? Just spend time with Christians? Right? No. No. You, you yeah. just no. Spend time with Christians. No. Right. Jesus you, you love them. Jesus okay, was good. right well, out there. How do you say I said it? Jesus was right in there with the people that were sinners. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what is he that statement someone made? Um, uh, share the gospel with everyone you meet and sometimes use words. When, 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 necessary. when necessary, use words. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, preach the gospel to everybody and when necessary, use words. Yeah. I think that's sort of how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Is that Francis is Jesus too or I, I somebody? Don't, I don't remember who it was. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. I, mean, I, life. I think prayer at, mm. what? No, no, just saying live your life as a Christian so that others can see it mm -hmm. right. with or without words right. which also does mean spending time with other Christians because they will know we are Christians by our love for one another mm -hmm. and when people see that love that you have with these other people like mm -hmm. they want that Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I can remember the first time I ever went into a Protestant church, you know, and I could not believe it. The way people were talking prior to service, they were mm -hmm. hugging each other. They were, you know, they were. <laughs> yes, yeah, I could not believe it that people would act like that in church. 
And then when it came time to sing, everybody was singing, you know, with <laughs> enthusiasm. I thought, and, and it was just like that, you know, wow, you know, I think I like this. You know, I'd like to be part of it. <laughs> yeah. Very odd. We take that for granted, but mm -hmm. when you are not saved, boy, it looks different. Mm -hmm. So you talked about what are we what are we doing as Christians, right? Yeah. Uh, especially to reach others, the, the unsee what have you. You've heard me say it often, and yeah, this little little lighthouse on the corner of my church definitely cares in that manner. When you enter the doors of our church, I don't think there's anyone that that you could go by that would not acknowledge you and talk to you. Okay, so that's morning worship service. We obviously have other outreach services. One in particular, very, very important, Friendship Kitchen, Soup Kitchen. Every Saturday morning from 11.30 to 1, there's a sign out there that says, come in, free food, we love you. And so we get them to feed them physically. Then guess what happens? Serving them and interacting yeah, yeah. with them, we get to try to feed them spiritually. And so what are we doing? This little church of mine is doing, we, man, last Saturday we had 39 people come in from the surrounding area for the Friendship Kitchen. And mm. some of them are starting to attend. And then when they come upstairs, they say, wow, wow, yeah, I felt good down there. I feel even better up here. <laughs> you know, so there's a yeah. classic example that I'm personally able to share with you folks about me and, of course, the church I go to. Mm. Yeah, nice. outreach, outreach, very important. This church sure has a lot of outreach as well. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I think a prayer also has a part to play in it, you know? Yes, praying for those people that you're talking about, but I think also praying for ourselves that we'll be that light that we want to be. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, we, when appropriate, we'll be bold to say a thing, you know? Paul asked for prayers that he would be bold. Sure. And it, it, not, not condescending, not judgmental, but, you know, you know, okay. you see people struggling with things in their life and you say, you know, I understand. But guess what? If you took a little different direction, you might not be struggling like that. You know? It's interesting. you saying that Paul asked for prayer and I, I I was just thinking, well, we need to pray not just for ourselves, but pray for each other. And it's like, yeah, if Paul didn't feel like his prayers were good enough. He needed he needed others praying too. Then how much more should we be praying for one another? I'm going to look it up just to make sure I quoted it. Uh, he actually, but you guys go on talking. I don't. Yes, yeah, I'm pretty sure I remember that verse. It's what do you think it. of it? What you just said in terms of when two or more are gathered i mean paul is alone with god he he needs the body he needs the love and the support of the body of christ oh. it's not just him and the lord he's not a lone ranger so we often think of him that way um he he needs the body as as do all those who are in ministry to the body, need the body. But, and they, yeah. they need to be a part of it as well as doing their, their ministry. And, and far more, those who are hired need the body so much and their support. So much more even, I think. Mm -hmm. Because they can often be seen as, as well, they're someone we hired um, to do the praying for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever to, for us. Because, yeah. you know, Ephesians tells us that the, the, the gifts that he gives the church as apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and it's for is for building up the body for the work of the ministry. We we don't say, oh, these are the ministers. No, they're they're there to to gift us to 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 work with us that we, as a whole body, might do the work of the ministry. Mm. We don't hire him to do the work of the ministry. Mm. Yeah, I'm not for hire. 
Oh. You pointed at me. I, I know. <laughs> I think the verse I believe that I was thinking of, uh, Ephesians 6, 18 and 19. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he wanted prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, that he would yeah. boldly share the gospel. Yeah, those aren't just trite words. He really meant it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he really needed it. Yeah. Speaking of prayer. Yes. We're having so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Wayne, for what you said, too, about, I, I think... I know for me, it's easy to forget that, that yeah. it's not up to the pastor to do all the ministry. Oh, yeah. He, he's equipping us to do the ministry. <laughs> oh, boy. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. <laughs> well, why should he get all the blessings? Pardon me? Yeah. Why should he get all the blessings? <laughs> <laughs> Why should he get all the reward? <laughs> it helps me to remember some of the things in the past that I was part of that produce that is still producing fruit to this day mm -hmm. some uh, nigh on to 50 years. Yeah. The, uh, a friend of mine I brought to church uh, in um, 1974. <laughs> he became a pastor. Mm -hmm. Had three children, all saved. They're now having their own children. Some are serving the Lord, et cetera, et cetera. When I went to his wake, the whole picture was put up in the front there. Wow, I'm a part of all that. <laughs> that might, if I hadn't been where I was at the time that I was befriending this guy, encouraging mm -hmm. to come into church. Maybe none of that would ever happen. That helps me to dissipate any guilt that might come off. <laughs> so I don't I don't think dwelling in the past is always wrong. Sometimes I need my past <laughs> to lean on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. Nope. Good reminder. Thank you, David. Mm. So what do we all pray for? Vivienne, who's having surgery in four minutes. All oh, right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Is it mm -hmm. nice? Yeah. No. No. Yeah. She comes to see me drop it. But no. you okay. She comes to see me drop oh, it, but okay. not for the Bible study at the beginning. A lot of operations. My personal. Um, a personal lady friend of mine for nigh on to 50 years knew the guy that got killed at the at the Holyoke Mall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, his, it was her mailman. She was very close friends with him. And I've seen oh. him probably within a day. Yeah. yeah. Why, he was was he just I he thought happened to be in the way? Yeah. Happened to be an innocent fight. Yeah. yeah. Fight broke out with a gun. Standing close. The point he's gone. Oh, the woman that was Yeah. Mailman of my first oh. 23 years old. Oh. He took it kind of hard. She wasn't even a small group on my sugar bread. Well, it kind of brought up memories of her own son. Women, you were thinking of his old wife. I didn't know. Right. <laughs> right. 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 yeah. I love her. Her name is Jean. Okay. Pray for Jean. Talk to him all the time. Well, our situations haven't really changed, so we pray for upcoming wedding and all that goes before and after. Continue to pray for Howard and his healing from his heart surgery. You know, when, when he's coming back, 
I think you said it a couple of times. Right. You mean to this area? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Or is it not? No. no. He's planning on it either, I think, April or May. But his I thought health, he was talking about spring, yeah. This hell spring, it, you know, yeah. might make it hard for them to make the trip. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. I guess, I mean, depending on how he heals it. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, Pastor Minoj is starting up a um, youth group um, yeah. pretty quickly. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the date, but it's this month early. How this young? Month. Pardon me? How young? I mean, how are all of um, you? Junior high and junior. high, I think, okay. which is sorely needed. Mm -hmm. so. And they're having it in their homes. So mm -hmm. you know, I think we should pray that they would get enough support sure. from uh, those of us who are supposed to be doing ministry. <laughs> <laughs> My youth minister 50 years ago to Oh, 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 I know that guy. He is one of the most right. faithful Christians we oh, have ever, ever met. Right. He's wonderful. Yeah, I've been a bit. Remember Brian? Fifty years ago. Oh, yeah. And he's always been rock solid. Yep. He was yep. given yep. Uh, the honorary, honorary pastor. Without even the education the necessary to that. Yep. They made him one of the past. Uh -huh. They promoted in uh -huh. within the church body. Uh -huh. And it should be. He is definitely going to hear from the Lord. Well done. That oh, well done. Oh. No doubt about By it. Unassuming he man. Was acquired he was acquired director there. and the youth minister and all that. He was my youth minister and he's still there. 50 yeah. years later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So any, any other prayer needs? Not Eric's almost again. Oh. Yeah. You said good? Because Eric's homeless again? Yeah. <laughs> Tony? <laughs> Wayne's speaking to you. Oh. He said yeah. Eric's homeless again and you said good. We're good, we're paying for him. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's do that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, but I'll slap him. <laughs> yeah, please, we've, please. We've, been, we've been praying for Eric for quite a while. He's had up yeah. and downs. Yeah, Duncan's yeah. been very helpful with him well, as much as possible. My wife is here. Oh, it's back this weekend. Are you sleeping in your car? Well, it's supposed to get down to 13 below on Friday night. Mm -hmm. yeah. he, he, was, he was offered to be put up for at least a night. He said, thank you, but no thank you. It's so hard to understand the way people's minds work. You know how, wow. I know that first mind. I chose to be living, I chose to be living in my car. That's pretty good, too. Wasn't it cold? Not if you park in the sun. Certain spots I knew where to park where it was warm enough and nobody would bother me. Yeah. But very peacefully. And it worked at night. What about at night? Oh, I worked at night. And even if I wasn't on that particular night, I could have gone to the place anyway. Yeah. Just to hang out in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. I always had a place where I could. Well, let's go to prayer then. Dave, would you start us? Oh, sure. Thank you. It's all to be here. So to share fellowship with each other and learn more from the word. Think of all prayer requests. I'm thinking first of me and my friend. Evelyn is going through an operation as we speak and guide the doctor's hands to <clears throat> they have wisdom from you to operate on her in a supernatural way. Help her to know that we're there with her and the doctor. You're always, always. Lord, I pray for 
Lord, there's been killings. David mentioned the man killed at the mall, and there's been other killings as well. And right in our area here, Lord, we don't we know that we live in, in difficult times, very troubled people that need the word of God the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we pray, Father, that families of the people that were injured or killed, we lift them up before you, Father, and may they see the need for a Savior. Lord, I lift up Pastor Minoj and Susie as they are going to be starting the youth group, Lord, and I do pray that you would equip them with all the spiritual tools that they need Lord, to uh, be good leaders to those children, and we pray that the turnout would be would be good, Lord, and that um, there'd be enough support from the congregation to assist them as they start this ministry. And Lord, we know the need is great among our young people, and um, we just pray for the success of that ministry. And Lord, as Susie and Pastor Minoj are not used to this cold weather, Lord, we just pray again that you would uh, just help them through it, Lord. And I just pray that they not be discouraged uh, by such a simple thing as the weather. I just pray, Lord, that in spite of the cold, that they would feel enthusiastic about their ministry. And Lord, that they would, um, you would strengthen their faith and all the spiritual tools that they need again to um, to do what they have to do. Mm -hmm. And I lift up <clears throat> Carol, Lord, to you as she is not able to be with us due to mm -hmm. physical pain <clears throat> and uh, issues, Lord. I, I pray that you would just be right next to her today, Lord, and, yeah. and just take away some of that discomfort and enable her to do the activities that she enjoys and that she needs to do mm. at home and, and just pray again for the wisdom of her doctors that mm. uh, they might find a way to help her um, ease up the discomfort that she feels. Mm. <laughs> I just lift our waters up to you, Lord. I ask you, oh Lord, that you would be with each one of them today, that you would draw them closer to you, that, that they would say yes to whatever it is that you call them to today, Lord. And we ask you, oh Lord, that you would, um, would, um, help each of us, Lord, with the anxieties that um, are particularly prevalent with all of the activities, particularly the wedding, Lord, that, that are going on in, in our lives now, Lord. Thank you again, Father, for this time. Wow, wow. It is so good, and we are uh, all uh, former officers of this church, and we we're all members and attendants of other churches with its ministries. Thank you for this ministry and this outreach program here of ECC. Uh, it's very special. And certainly down through the, the years I've been a part of this group, I'm so thankful that I can be a part of uh, the body of believers. We are one in the bond of love, and certainly uh, we get a chance to share that as we delve into the scripture and find uh, what it means. Uh, and also, more importantly, how it applies to us and how we can go forward and be better witnesses for you. And certainly we thank you for that. We thank you for Diane here being with us uh, and hope she enjoys herself and makes it a, a regular part of the week activities on Thursday morning. And again, for certainly Pastor Millage and wow, wow, his uh, his ministry here, just a, just a joy and a privilege to know him and his compassion and care for the church. And now he's once again going into another area so so lacking in so many churches in my own church in particular, the youth ministry. And there's a church of tomorrow, very, very important. As uh, Chris has already said, bless him and make, make that be the start of a ministry that is gonna grow and prosper. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
if any of you um, on your computers, if we had a guy preach on Sunday who was a member of our congregation, Bill Enos. Were you here? He was so good. It yeah. was the most amazing message yeah. about the cares that are mm -hmm. weighing people down. Mm -hmm. And and yeah. he used a visual that was ingenious. Oh. It, was, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> yes. And if you, you can go on YouTube and um, you could look at that message if you are so interested. It was, um, it was amazing. It, it really was, and it was phenomenal. He, he got it, he had everybody come up. I mean, this church, it, it doesn't happen, but it did this time. Yeah. And he, everybody stood up and touched people. I mean, uh, was he just moving? Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. oh, it was a wonderful <laughs> Right, right and it made you up. realize everybody has a rock in their life, two or two or yeah. three yeah. that are holding oh, them down. Wow. Yeah. You yeah. know, and all these people got up, and it's like they, they were, were all. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, we we watched it on on YouTube. Yeah. That kind of yeah. 